Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, uh, we're talking about Marcel Darius trade analytics. Uh, of course, recently, breaking news. Well, I, I'm not really breaking any news to most, uh, but Marcel Darius uh, was traded from the Buffalo Bills to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And with that trade, I wanted this video to really just focus in on Marcel Darius. So, not really weighing pros and cons of the trade or any stuff like that, but just focusing on Marcel Darius on the type of player that he was pre draft, uh, based on his pre draft analytics, and also what he's been like in the NFL. And then ultimately, what were some of the things that, that pushed the Buffalo Bills to make this trade as well? Uh, just sort of the catalyst for this trade, because I do think there's things in data that show that make you go okay why did the buffalo bills trade them oh, okay that makes sense so just kind of give you perspective of why the buffalo bills might have traded marcel darius and why the jacksonville jaguars might have wanted marcel darius you know for for different sort of stuff based on the data and if you're new to the channel so if you're new to analytics and you're new to my videos all terms of definitions will be in the description so if you don't know what solo tackle data is or you don't know what an explosive lower body strength score is. If any of these things are foreign to you, uh, just go to the description and all that information, or at least the terms and definitions will be there uh, for you. So uh, starting with Marcel Darius's production, his pre this is basically his pre-draft pre profile um, coming out, out of uh, Alabama. Um, when it comes to his uh, production data, he had an 81.93 solo tackle mark share production score a 48.03 sack market share production score, and a 61.53 tackle floss market share score. Uh, based on all of his data, he pretty much looks like a Pro Bowl level defensive tackle. I mean, that was what his production looked like coming out of Alabama. And he's largely met most of those thresholds. He's, he's essentially fulfilled the promise. You know, whatever the potential was of his production coming out of college, he's pretty much met all those benchmarks. And it's just a matter now of if he continues to meet more benchmarks than he's already hit. So that's essentially the basics when it comes to his production coming out is he had great production coming out. And he's largely hit most of the thresholds that he was supposed to hit based on his uh, production profile. And on top of that, you look at his athleticism profile. Um, he had an 86.82 explosive lower, lower, lower body strength score, 92.18 speed score, and an 83.66 uh, flexibility score and and based on this these data points as well um, pretty much hits the all pro thresholds pro bowl thresholds all indicative of a high quality defensive tackle um, so not only did he have uh, pro bowl level production coming out of alabama based on his market share data uh, but he also had pro bowl to all pro athleticism trades uh, coming out of alabama as well uh, which makes sense he was a top 10 overall pick of course, and he should have been. Uh, and if you think about his career up to this point, uh, you know, being a guy that has hit that threshold, has hit that multiple Pro Bowl threshold at the very least, um, he, he's he's pretty much fulfilled his promise of of what you should have expected from him. Uh, and and now let's get into some actual NFL data stuff. So. What was he in the NFL? You know, what was he production-wise in the NFL? And maybe what, what are some of the reasons why the Buffalo Bills traded him, which I think can be seen in the data. So looking at his NFL production data, and again, this is the same thing as the college data, but it's at the NFL level. And looking at things like solo tackle market share, sack market share, and pass deflection market share, Marcel Darius from 2011 to 2014 uh, was pretty much a high high 80 percentile to 90 plus percentile level impact defensive tackle. You know, during that time period when he was going to the Pro Bowls and he was doing all that stuff, um, having a high impact in that time span, he was a elite defensive tackle in that time period. Um, so, you know, this is the start of his career, of course, but he was phenomenal in that period. And, and if you're the Jacksonville Jaguars, this is – this is why you're taking a chance on this guy because he has shown in the past, not currently, but in the past, to put up ridiculous top five defensive tackle impact. You know, whether you're talking solo tackles, sacks, or even pass deflection, you know, ability, which is pretty rare for an interior defensive lineman, by the way, to, to get 
you know, really high end pass deflection, uh, you know, the ability to swap passes and, and such. So very productive in that time span. But past 2014, you can clearly see regression. You know, from 2015, he he had a 79.36 impact year. Uh, then 2016, he had a 75.78 impact year. And so far in 2017, like this is ultimately what pushed this trade, which uh, it, it's it's sort of the moment when you're, you've are you been shopping all day and then you, 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 you just throw your hands up and go, all right, give me that snicker bar, right? You know, at, at the cashier aisle is is you look at his production this year and he has a 37.40 out of 100 in terms of total impact. Now, of course, this is only based on a half season or less than a half season's worth of data, but it should give you a picture of why the Buffalo Bills have been pushing for this trade. And if you're a Buffalo Bills fan, I don't really think you should be ashamed about this at all because he really wasn't having that much impact this year. You know, he, he, he has not been performing like he did in 2011 to 2014, uh, nor has he even been performing like he did in 2015 to 2016. Um, so from that standpoint, I don't think as a Buffalo Bills fan, whatever you got for him, I think is good. Because, and if you had issues with him, you know, like relationship issues where the player and the team just didn't get along uh, and it was just an untenable relationship, then there's nothing you can do about that situation either. You just have to cut your losses and move on. So um, from that standpoint, if you're a Buffalo Bills fan, I don't think you should be angry or mad about this particular trade um, because of, you know, because obviously of, of, of what he has done, you know, he has shown regression. You know, um, you know, from 2015 to 2017, he's shown pretty much steep regression. And when you look at the age data, and again, you know, just breaking out the age data, um, this basically deals with the number of above average def defensive tackle performances. So, for example, uh, at age 23, 59 out of all above average defensive tackle performances from 2005 to 2016. At age 23, there were 59 of those performances. Um, and this just gives you an idea of, you know, where do defensive tackles usually peak and when do they start to like when do the numbers of them putting up high impact years when do those when, when does that start to decline I guess is the best way to put it and as you can clearly see all defensive tackles in general that have above average impact peak at around 26 and past 26 that's when you start to see regression that's when you start to see a drop off in the numbers of above average defensive tackle performances from age 26 all the way down to age 35 where you pretty much only have eight in that time span and then most defensive tackles typically you know retire after that point you know they're pretty much done with playing football after that point uh and when you look at marcelo darius he's pretty much in that arc of regression you know from age 26 is when most defensive tackles peak 27 is when there usually is a drop off and then 28 to 29, you have sort of another sort of drop off, and then you get into age 29 to 30, and then, you know, and then it just keeps going down from there. So, you know, Darius is at that age. I mean, he's not 28 yet, but he's about to be 28 this year, and he's showing a lot of regression. I mean, just in terms of his impact, he's showing a ton of regression. I mean, a 37.40 total impact score is nowhere near what he was able to do uh, from 2011 to 2014 in terms of his overall impact. And I'm not just talking about sacks. I'm talking about solo tackles and, and, and the whole spectrum of how a defensive tackle can impact things. So that is the thing that you have to worry about as a Jacksonville Jaguars fan. Now, I do know that some Jacksonville Jaguar fans will say that, well, Doug Marone, you know, because obviously Doug Marone, knows Marcelo Darius. He's coach, he, he has coached Marcelo Darius prior. Doug Marone was with Marcelo Darius from 2013 to 2014 um, as the head coach of the Buffalo Bills. And as such, yeah, he was productive in that time span. You know, you look at Marcelo Darius from 2013 to 2014, he was, you know, productive during that time span. But I don't think that you can place the entire reason why Marcelo Darius is not productive on Doug Marone because you can clearly see that in 2015, he was still pretty dang productive. Um, you know, the year that Mar Doug Marone wasn't there, he still had pretty high solo tackle data. Sack stuff did drop a bit, and he also had pass deflection, you know, was not exactly where it needed to be, but pass deflection sometimes is a, a bit of luck at times. 
uh, as well. But, you know, I don't think you could put everything solely on the fact that Doug Marone is not, you know, was not the head coach. So I guess that's just my basic sort of point is that you could say that the regression was because Doug Marone was not the coach there anymore. Or you could also say the regression is just normal regression of defensive tackles with age. Um, now, just to get into the final point, you know, just to kind of wrap all this up. And the reason why I even brought up the pre-draft profile is that the one thing you can hope as a Jacksonville Jaguars fan is that Marcelo Darius is just a special defensive tackle. He went into a bit of a rut. And now he's, you know, or basically he went into a bit of a, uh, you know, a valley and he's going to go to the Jacksonville Jaguars and he's going to be amazing. Now, you know, like he's going to be motivated and he's going to play hard. And all this regression that I'm showing you right now was not because of his age or, you know, just injuries catching up with him. Because again, no, most of the time, the reason why regression happens is because of injuries. You know, defensive tackles and most NFL players don't play a while because injuries happen and they just can't recover from those injuries. Very rare amount of players actually continue to play into their 30s, as you can clearly see, or at least have above average impact into their 30s. So you, you can't just take that as like a norm. It's not a normal thing for a defensive tackle to have that type of impact at that age. Um, so that's just, again, the other sort of thing I just want to get out there. But that's the one thing you can bet on is that when you look at Marcel Darius again, you know, you got a guy that had um, all pro, uh, well, Pro Bowl level production from Alabama, which is really rare. It's really rare to have Pro Bowl production for most defensive tackles um, in, in most areas. Had all pro level athleticism, which is also very rare for def defensive tackle. You know, has more than enough athleticism to be an above average defensive tackle and has been one such. So you can make the case that. Despite the valley here, he's going to hit another peak because he's Marcel Darius and he just went into a rut. And, you know, he just went into a little valley and he's going to pop out of it. That's the best you can expect from him. Um, you can also expect that maybe he gets back to his 2015 to 2016 uh, impact, which was fine. Or you could also expect him to just be a really good rotational player. I mean, it's whatever you want to do with him, obviously. But... Uh, but the bottom line is, is, is this, this is, this is why this trade happened. The reason why Marcelo Darius was traded or why the Bills were pushing to trade him is because he just has not been that impactful. He has regressed. His impact has regressed. He's no longer the guy that he was from 2011 to 2014 based on what he's been able to do on a football field. Now, if he goes to the Jacksonville Jaguars, is he going to be a completely different man now? That remains to be seen. Is there stuff in his pre-draft profile that points to that being a possibility? Absolutely. But that is the only risk that you're really taking with a guy like this, is that this is, this is a player that clearly has regression, and you're banking on the regression being more so because of things other than health and just not being able to play at a high level anymore, uh, if you will. So... Um, but yeah, so that's the basic stuff with Marcel Darius in terms of his uh, analytics profile. This is not to condemn what the Jacksonville Jaguars have done or to make fun of the Buffalo Bills or any of that stuff. It's just to give you some of the basics about uh, you know, what he was coming out of college, what he was in the NFL, and then what his future could be based on the various variables that we have available You know, when it comes to his age and also what he's actually been able to do impact-wise on the football field this year. Uh, so with all that stuff out of the way, of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. Uh, you can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Jim Metrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, uh, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.